So I will talk about ADAS and automated driving. Uh, I represent Infineon Technologies. We are a global semiconductor manufacturer headquartered out of uh, Munich in Germany, the old Siemens semiconductors. And in the automotive space, we are the largest semiconductors in the world. So go to the next slide, please. So what, is, well, what are we talking about here? You know, The race for automated driving. Everyone is trying to compete. And we are also seeing a lot of OEMs in India. A lot of the recent applications, for example, the Mahindra XUV, then MG. They're all trying to introduce some amount of uh, automated driving in their vehicles. And what this means is the need for a lot of electronics. And the earlier speakers adhere to, and I'll just go through this. I'm not going to go talk about the products in there, but more of what the applications need and what are the various products that most of us and our competition, which are the basic building blocks for a lot of these applications have. Next slide, please. Very importantly, what is, or what is required for automated driving is dependability. You are trying to put you know, whatever control you have in your hands, in your mind, to the machine. So very importantly, what is required? Dependability. Dependability is very key be it in terms of dependability of technology or trust. That is basically what equates to autonomous driving. And if you just read the definition on there below. That's OK, go ahead, yeah. So what is really what happened to and what evolved and where we got today because of what? The original intent, you know, when people started to work on ADAS was basically to assist drivers to avoid accidents more as a safety feature in all of our vehicles, be it you know, cars or trucks. But what we have evolved and what we have learned is, hey guys, you know what? It's not just avoiding accidents, but basically also to enable automated driving, you know, remove the dependence from the driver. And especially a lot of people working in this area, you know when you get to silk board, what it actually feels. And where you really don't want to be in control and have someone else control your car, right? This is what we are actually looking at and what we see in terms of uh, automated driving in the near future. Next slide, please. If you look at the evolution of ADAS, first started off, as I talked about, more for safety. Blind spot detection, crash avoidance. And then they realized, hey, you know what? If I can do this, why can't I let basically have adaptive cruise control? Not sure how many of us have had this opportunity to drive with the cruise control in our cars, especially maybe some of us with the new road, Bangalore to Mysore, few stretches, but not really, yeah? And then we have lane assist. May not be much of an issue in India because we don't follow this anyway, especially in Bangalore. Most importantly, night vision. Guys like me getting older, eyesight's not, get, not, not as good as it used to be before. Definitely something that would help me do. And more importantly, you know, remote parking, as well as you know, rear cross traffic alert. These are some of the applications. And if you look at it, where it started off with, you know, as Mr. Mombasa Wala said, you know, just a radar, a mid-range radar. And today, if you look at it, man, even I can't even read this without glasses on. Look at the number of sensors, number of systems that are in a car today. And definitely, one application I don't have here, which we need for our Roads in Bangalore is, you know, for craters or the potholes on the road. I think that's very important. That's something that we would have to, you know, accommodate into these designs if you have to be actually successful in India. Next slide, please. So we talk about, and I'm basically talking about level five. We also have level six, which is being worked on. But what it is, you know, and I'm not going to spend too much time. You guys can read what it is, level one. There's a driver, and then finally, there is no driver. So if you look at it, what are the various applications and what are the various features in vehicles that actually got incorporated going in from level one, two, three, and four? Four, in India, we are talking today of a lot of applications having level two. The recent XUVs and MG, some of the vehicles, and some of the Hyundai vehicles have level two in them. And this is where we essentially want to get to. If you've had the opportunity to be in San Francisco in the last couple of months, I think you've had the opportunity to maybe rent a Waymo or basically ride on the Waymo, which basically gives you, you know, the robo-taxis that they call them here 
or, or in those regions that you could actually ride. So we're looking at level five is completely automated driving. And essentially, in order to get there, like I talked about, right, reliability, dependability is very critical. And what are the various things that you need to do in order to have this? Next slide, please. You need basically sense, yeah? It needs to sense. So you have various sensors in the vehicle, be it cameras, be it LIDAR, radar, ultrasonic, microphones. And most importantly, when they sense, something has to contribute, you know, like your brain. There's got to be something that actually has to compute. And that's basically where we talk about dependable computing. And look at the word dependable. It's very critical because you're basically taking away what you can control and then giving it to a machine. Then you have a you know, lot of uh, opportunities, a lot of products, for example, be it a central gateway, sensor fusion, and most importantly, once you have something that senses, something that actually computes, something has to actually actuate. So these are very, you know, in simple words, three things that we as humans do, right? Sense, interpret, and then take an action. So the, here it could be, you know, we, we today at an EV conference, but if you look at it, this is also for the conventional ICs. You have transmission, braking, all the various activities that we would do, our mind would do, and provide an action to the various uh, uh, parts of our body is basically what the machine is doing here. For it, you need dependent memory, and very importantly, also secure communication, authentication, because you're driving on a road, you need to also anticipate the conditions that are there in front. For example, if it's raining, it's snowy, or what would be, you know, the distance for you to stop in case the environment is very different on the road. So very importantly, this is what an autonomous driving system would actually require in your car. Next slide, please. So we talk about sensors. I just focus on the three main aspects here and talk more about uh, sensor fusion. For example, what are the various sensors that you have in your car? Yeah? For example, it's radar, camera, and LIDAR are the three ones. And these encompass what we call together as a sensor fusion. Next slide, please. For example, this is you know, how a vehicle perceives its surrounding. For example, if you look at it, uh, these are uh, you know, in different colors for various applications, be it you know, pedestrian protection, automated emergency braking, ACC, CTA, side impact. So various features of various applications, for example, be it a radar, LIDAR, camera, lasers, and this is an overview of the various opportunities, applications. And the reason I put this slide up is we have an audience you know, with a wide background. And if you look at it, when this comes into reality, look at the number of applications, number of products each of you can focus on and work on in order for this to develop or an OEM to actually develop an automated car. Next slide, please. Uh, I just talk about uh, you know sensor fusion, what it is, a whole bunch of sensors together, providing or uh, enabling this ad ADAS functionality to actually work. Next slide, please. Now there are also different types of sensor fusion depending on the application that you need. Okay, it could either be centralized or fully distributed, and both of these have their pluses and minuses and depending on the functionality or the level of ADAS you want to have in your vehicle, you basically could use either of these. This is very thing what we are seeing today in terms of the vehicle architecture. You know, in terms of the e-architecture, whether it's zonal or central, we're moving towards, you know. Uh, so we basically have similar thing here in terms of uh, also the sensor fusion for these applications. Next slide, please. Then also depending on the fail-safe requirements in your vehicle. Either you could go to a symmetric or an asymmetric type of a configuration in your architecture. And symmetric is basically when you're looking at uh, higher functionalities going from an ADAS level three and above, you could still say with a asymmetric when you're looking at an application level one and two. And very importantly, you can see that, you know, main driver is cost and what are the applications that you're actually trying to address. And if it is essentially fail-safe, you need 
you know, a redundancy in terms of compute, redundancy in terms of actuate. Similarly, you don't need in terms of uh, asymmetric where it is basically very limited functionality in case of a failure. Or you don't have, uh, you know, all systems, all operations do not have a redundancy built in for every application. Next slide, please. Looking at you know, the next level, what we talk about in terms of uh, level of automations also determines the architecture in your vehicle. For example, if it is in terms of you know, perception, what you see in order to make decision, and finally in terms of vehicle control. And perception is mainly related to maybe generic and uh, parallel computing engines, the GPUs, dedicated hardwares. And then when we get into the decision making, it's main, the CPUs are the GPUs that are actually coming into picture. And finally, vehicle control, you're talking of SLD microcontrollers for various applications that you actually need, be it in terms of uh, you know, collision avoidance or in terms of uh, secured gateways. Because a lot of information is getting transacted from the vehicle to the cloud to some kind of computing anywhere else. So that is very important that a lot of data, a lot of information about the vehicle, a lot of the condition of the driving is all getting communicated. And essentially that is where SLD requirements and the need for safe and secure transmission of data is required. Next, please. Then very importantly, right, we've got uh, you know, certain other features in a vehicle that are very important in order for us for the ADAS implementation. One, for example, if you're talking of level one and two, and because a lot of these ADAS applications started with improving the safety of driving. One is the driver monitoring system that ensure that our attention is always on the road, that we are not distracted. And also in terms of when we get into you know, a, a autonomous vehicle, for example, where we talk about there are certain things that are mainly driven out of legislation or in terms of safety. Like, you know, forgotten child, we've had instances where people have either left forgotten their children or their pets in the vehicles. And we've had certain not so pleasant uh, endings for a lot of these. And very importantly, I think these are requirements in terms of the DMS or the ICMS that are required for these vehicles. Next slide, please. So if I talk about uh, in-cabin sensing, right? In order for automation, you have you know, gesture control. With HMI, a lot of us in our competition are working on various features. Then we talk in terms of uh, comfort. We want to simulate what we have in our living rooms, in our cars. And we spend so much time in our cars today that the need for these have actually increased. Then in terms of uh, number of displays, today if you see even a small car has you know, 9 inch, 12 inch displays that were kind of unheard of long back. And surprising as you look at also two wheelers, yeah? uh, the new TVS iCube has a 9 inch, you know, a cap sense display. Yeah, which I still don't have in my car, which is about five, six years old. So which is something which is really changing. And that is where the need for these new technologies are coming in. And very importantly, yes, the machine takes over, but there is also a need to give the driver access. The driver needs to be able to, in case he or she is not comfortable with what is happening, to control. Because when you talk about you know, the vehicle that we have in the middle, you don't even see a steering wheel here. Yeah? And you're, you're, you're completely depending on the machine. You're completely, you know, put all your faith in it. And there has to be certain aspects where you know, the need for some kind of intervention is required. And that is basically where you have a lot of these electronics coming in. Need to check. You have sensors. You have a lot of other. Uh, products, for example, smart A bags, it has to detect where the person is sitting. You know, today, if you look at in terms of uh, the A bags in your car, it detects based on whether you know you have occupant sensors which detect if a person is sitting or not. So what this means is, ADAS is not just about you know letting the car drive on its own, but the need for a lot of these technologies that come in, opportunities for a lot of applications, a lot of products that can be developed. Next slide, please. 
and uh, just very briefly, uh, what are the various uh, uh, ECUs or various uh, products that can actually go into an ICMS application? If you go to the next slide. Similarly, if you look at, you know, for example, how can driver monitoring system be realized? One is, you know, we have camera-based, which basically can monitor your pupils, your facial expressions to determine whether you're drowsy, whether you're focused, whether you're concentrating on the road, distracted. And indirectly is, you know, making sure that your hands are on the wheel. It also monitors your steering input. Definitely something that, uh, you know, autopilot, we would all love to do, yeah? This is something that we could do, do our work on the way home or on the way to the office, which essentially what we see hopefully would be the future for us. Next slide, please. Similarly, on a DMS, we can go on to the next slide. So th this is my last slide, yeah? So what, what, does, what does ADAS as an application mean? For example, if you look on top, you know, as a human driver, you need to sense what's coming, what's on the road, what could be the, the next action by somebody in front or on the side, be able to compute. Our brain computes this and then actuates. You know, whether I accelerate, I brake, I re-steer, do what I do. And what autonomous car would do is actually simulate these activities of sense, compute, and actuate. So a lot of applications, a lot of products that would go in and enhance amount of electronics, which is, I think, a good for me and my predecessor speakers. We all come from the semiconductor industry, so more electronics, good for us. And uh, this is, I think, the way of the future. We're already seeing this in a lot of countries. And we are going to see some level of this automated driving in India. May not go to level five at this time because they're also not just the vehicle, but a lot of infrastructure off the road that is actually necessary in order for us to accomplish this. So uh, I think exciting times ahead and uh, more than just an EV vehicle. So thank you, guys.